Hey, what's up guys? Tito here with the Loho Android and for tonight's video for you guys, basically I was going to do it a comparison, but I figured let's do it differently. Let's go from comparison to an evolution. And what I'm talking about is the Vault series offered by Sprint, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile. Now sure, I have the Vault 1 and the Vault 2, and some people still don't know that the X Power is considered the LG Vault 3. But you and I know that. So without further ado, we're going to discuss the evolution of the Vault series, showcasing the Vault 1, 2, and 3. Let's go. So as I said in the beginning, this is not a comparison, but more like a look through the evolution for the Vault series that's offered by Sprint, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile. So here we have them. We have the foundation, we have the current version, and we have what's in between. So we're going to spend a little moment with each one of these devices, just kind of showcasing what they were all about in their time. Starting with the LG Vault here, which was a, a pretty good phone for a budget device. I remember a lot of people unboxed this, this phone and was like truly upset with it because of the size. Some people were just too into phablets. Everything had to be 5.7 inch display and they were like, oh this feels like a toy. But as soon as they realized what kind of specs it had, when it came out, people were thoroughly impressed. 3000 milliamp hour battery so you got like a day and a half on a single charge and it still does till today. IR blaster on the top so you can use this for your TV remote control and it even have NFC for tap to pay and things like that. So the Vault 1 pretty much laid the foundation of the Vault kind of you know look, looking to be a little bit more than just a mid-range, more than just a budget device. But a budget device with an agenda. That was the Vault. Currently right now this Vault is on a custom ROM, it's running San Engine Mod 13 so it's on the latest version of Android. Well, not anymore, but it's close enough. Um, and it's running the Pixel Launcher right now. So that's the launcher that I currently have on here. And, you know, this device, being able to root, being able to um, put a custom ROM, is amazing. Um, the development still continues for this device, so it obviously goes to show like exactly how many people still tend to love this device. Another thing that was really cool was that it had down-firing speaker. Not speakers, but one speaker. But it was down firing, so it was still good for when you cuffed it in your hand, you still got a blast of sound. Of course, just to kind of make it look cool, they added an additional cutout, but there was only one speaker. So the Vault 1, till today, still, people rock this phone and they still love and enjoy it. Um, spec wise, 8 gigs of internal storage, 1 gig of RAM, runs a Snapdragon 400 processor. And that's pretty much the Vault 1. So next up we have the LG Vault 2. Now this is a pretty awesome phone. And again, this is one of those phones that basically had a secondary name. Um, we know it as the Vault 2, but it is also known as the LG G4C. Kind of taking a page out of like Apple's book with, you know, the iPhone 5C. Anyways, uh, aesthetically pleasing. It's got this nice curved back okay the back is curved so many people are always wondering like is it curved is it not curved no it's curved the screen is not so it's not like the G Flex series where the screen and basically the body was curved no this one just has a curved back made it feel real good to hold in the hand 5 inch display so you got a bigger display but not phablet sized and it showcased LG's buttons in the back power volume up volume down which I actually like this setup you have your 8 megapixel rear camera with flash and a 5 megapixel shooter up front which took stellar selfies so it was even better no down firing speakers which was kind of upsetting no NFC and the battery was reduced from a 3000 milliamp hour battery to I believe this is a 2650 so let's go ahead and pop the back off just to make sure that it is and 2540 so I was wrong but 
kind of reducing the battery size, but it's still got good battery time. Maybe not the best. Maybe you didn't go a day and a half on a charge, but you could make it through a whole day on one charge of the battery. Unless you were going to play some games, then you would really kill the battery off. Um, this device right now is still on 5.1.1 Lollipop. And uh, right now it's running the Nexus launcher instead of the Pixel launcher. Pixel launcher does not work on this phone because it is running 5.1.1 Lollipop. But the Nexus launcher is pretty much the same. There's no difference. Just a name change. Obviously giving you clue as to this year we weren't getting Nexus devices. But they were. I'm thinking they were planning on doing it. But anyhow. So, um, yeah, it runs Lollipop. It has 8 gigs of internal storage. It's got 1 gigabyte of RAM. It runs, I believe, the Snapdragon 410 processor. So that was something, um, you know. But, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it, it felt more like a downgrade to a lot of people. A lot of people really looked at the Vault 2 as a downgrade from the Vault 1, even though it upped the screen size and kind of gave this um, new feel to the body, as well as showcasing LG's new uh, positionings for the volume rocker and the power button. Um, the Vault 2, in my opinion, still a good phone, but when it came out, compared to the Vault 1, it wasn't considered an upgrade. And now we have the most current one, the LG X Power, which was going to be called the LG Vault 3, um, but they decided to keep it the X Power, but we're not going to dive into that. But let's just call it as they were going to name it, the Vault 3. So the LG Vault 3 here basically uh, just recently came out, and um, basically it's kind of like uh, I'm, I don't want I don't want to say like an apology for the Vault 2, but I do want to say that they kind of um, they took the X power and named it the Vault 3, basically. I mean because it 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 encompassed everything that the Vault 1 was. Almost everything, as a matter of fact, I should correct myself. Almost everything, but not entirely. A few things that the Vault 1 has that the X-Power doesn't have is, one, it has the IR Blaster. No IR Blaster on the X-Power. Um, another thing is NFC. The X-Power does not have NFC at all. So, uh, yeah, no Android tap to pay or none of that stuff. But it still encompasses everything of the Vault 3, one being that 4100 milliamp hour battery. You really do, up to today's standards, get about a day and a half to almost two days. Uh, just of how apps respond, especially on Marshmallow and gaming and all that stuff. You have about a day and a half with the X Power, which is what I guess like the Vault series was all about, was having good battery life. Obviously, packing 3000 milliamps into a small device like the Vault 1, obviously meant that they wanted you to have a good amount of battery time and not have to constantly keep charging it. Now they kind of strayed away with that with the Vault 2 and it's brought back by them bringing the X Power and basically considering it the Vault 3. Um, you do get a 5 megapixel front facing shooter, it does have an 8 megapixel rear cam so kind of like stays alongside with the uh, Vault 2 in this situation. However the camera sensors on the X Power is far better than the Vault 2. 5.3 inch display, so kind of reaching there, but not really considered a phablet. So, still considered in the smartphone realm. So one of the main differences between the Vault 3 versus the Vault 2 and the Vault 1 is that the Vault 1 and Vault 2 both ran Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. The 400 on the Vault, the 410 on the Vault 2. With the X Power, it does not run a Qualcomm chip. As a matter of fact, it runs a MediaTek. It runs the MediaTek 6755, clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and that is an octa-core processor so with that being said basically just spending some time with these devices would you say that the the LG X power is considered to be an upgrade from the Vault 1 the Vault 2 my answer is from the Vault 1 yes it's still considered an upgrade even if it doesn't have NFC even if it doesn't have an IR blaster it still performs better than the Vault 1. Okay, with that octa-core chipset it's got inside there, when 2 gigs of RAM versus 1 gig of RAM, you're definitely going to be able to multitask on the X Power. Now, is the X Power basically an upgrade from the Vault 2? That's a definite yes. But, 
they're all great devices and even till today the Vault 1 is still a good device to pick up and use if you're looking for something that is not super big, that is not overly flashy and flamboyant. If you want a smartphone that's going to perform and give you good battery, definitely the Vault 1 is a great pickup. So right now, I'm basically just going to run a Geekbench for you guys so you guys can see the differences between the three, and we're going to close it off. So, And so for the last part here, enjoy this. I'm going to go ahead and run a Geekbench for you guys just because it's you guys. And we're going to go now. And we'll watch them start off, and we'll check out the, the scores here in just a sec. And there we go. There's the scores. Geekbench, 433 single, 1095 multi on the Vault 1, 495 single, 1181 on the Vault 2, 704 single, 1831 multi on the Vault 3. So there you guys go for some geek benches for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my video, and also stay tuned for the comparison with the X Power versus this guy right here. Smash that like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe and catch me in the next video. I'll see you guys later.